the district one. Carrie, Carrie's here. Okay, let me tell you who's running because you need to know who's here and who's not here. Oh, Tom, come on. Baby, I should have known. We have Tom Watson here. Kelly Allen obviously is not here. So obviously his interest is not for the community. Carolyn Vaughn, is she here? Nope. That's another one you can scratch off your list. Okay, Carrie is here. John Garcia, is he here? Nope, he's not here. And Frank, Frank either. So I want you to remember, mothers and grandmothers, that the reason for this forum is to see who cares enough to come for a community forum. It's not an endorsement forum, this is a community forum. So I'm asking you to take a listen and hear the people that came. Because those people that support mothers and grandmothers are the ones we're going to support. The people that are not here, I'm afraid, are not going to be supported by mothers and grandmothers because everyone got notified and had an opportunity. So as we start for District 1, let's see, who's first on the ballot of you two? Number two. Number two. So Mr. Watson will go first. Susie, we just like to stand where we are. The last time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Zulak has always been a soft spot in my heart. I've spent many times in this building over many years enjoying my brothers and sisters. And now the grandmas and the grandpas out there in the public are going to be watching this. And the one thing that I want you to remember is that we must communicate. We must talk to each other. The day of rancor must be over. The day of when you don't like somebody and your own city council, that has to be in the past. Just like Republicans and Democrats. Once they're elected as judges and other positions, they are no longer Democrats and Republicans. And Tom Watson will never put my party in front of my people. I have 27 years of experience. I'm a Rotarian. I'm the chairman of Animal Control for New Aces County for over 25 years. I've been on the food service board for the city of Corpus trying to make the restaurants clean. I've been the liaison between the city and county for parks and recreation so we wouldn't have <coughs> duplication. That almost rhymed, didn't it? <laughs> and one of the main reasons that I run for city council is sitting right over in the far side of this room. Normans, Timothy, your children, is the future of Corpus Christi Tech. And as others have spoke in this room today, we must not over expand ourselves as the city of Corpus Christi due to Eagle Fork. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been an oil field brat most all my life and they don't last forever. God, good God put that in the soil, we suck it out and we use it for our industry, for our cars, and for our recreation. But 50 years from now, when these children are grown, it's going to be gone. Tom Watson will always push for safe and responsible use of petrochemicals, and I will always push for renewable resources such as wind, water, and whatever I can find. And desal, definitely want to look into that as deep as possible. I've been on quite a few committees on desal, quite a few seminars. There are some very encouraging things, but it's going to take a council that is willing to listen and communicate with you, the citizen. That's all I have to say at this time. Thank you. Good. Is it morning still? <laughs> Good morning. Or is it afternoon already? Entonces, buenas tardes. Yo hablo español. Thank you to the mothers and grandmothers for having us. Um, I'm 53 years old and I'm actually a mother of a nine-year-old. 
So sometimes I actually get called grandmother, <laughs> even though I'm not, I'm just a mother. Um, the LULAC, also wanted to thank the LULAC number one for having us. I um, know a little bit about LULAC, but not enough. So I went online this morning, kind of cramming for the test, and found out that, that the um, League of United Latin American Citizens, where we're standing right now, number one, this one actually started LULAC in the whole United States. Started it right here in Corpus Christi. So that's something that our city has to be proud of. I was very pleased a couple of days ago to get uh, endorsed by the Color Times newspaper for the District 1 seat. And I was really happy because there are six people running. And so that's uh, quite, um, I don't know, something to be proud of. And um, I also got endorsed by the Firefighters Association for the District 1 seat. I was very pleased about that. And the neighborhood's first group because of my stance on annexation, which I'll get to later. Um, the one I did not get, the endorsement I did not get, was from the Real Estate Association. I guess I didn't answer the questions on their questionnaire right, because I said things like, yeah, I think that landlords need to be responsible for their property. And I think that the city needs to go in and make sure that the landlords aren't running slums and that they're taking care of it so that we have quality low-income housing in our city. And I think answers like that may have made it so the realtors did not even want to talk to me. They didn't even invite me to their, uh, to their interview. I didn't even get invited to the interview that bad. So anyway, I'm not in here for the realtors, I guess, right? Um, in the Caller Times editorial, they did talk about the reason that they chose me. One of it was because District 1 is so diverse in the diversity of our area. And it wasn't just ethnic diversity. It's just a lot of different kinds of people in a different kinds of neighborhoods. And we need someone that can really relate to all these neighborhoods. And that's a big challenge. I live on North Beach. And uh, District 1 stretches all the way to Cal Allen. And it goes through our most historic parts of our city and our most historic neighborhoods. And even Cal Allen, way out there, it looks new when you drive through it because everything's so beautiful out there. It's one of our oldest communities with the multi-generations of people living out there. And we get the same thing in Hillcrest, Washington Coles, um, Oak Park, those kinds of parts of town. And that's all who I would represent just read, where did I put it? Oh, hold on, it's right here. There it is, Color Times. Here's the endorsement from the Color Times. So I just wanted to read one little thing they said. They said, my opponent is named Kelly Allen. They said, what turned us, what turned us was not Allen's lack of quality, but the quality of one of his five challengers, North Beach resident, Carrie Robertson Meyer. And then it said, Meyer knows the city and its people better than old folks born and raised here, and better than some incumbents. She makes an effort to do that. We found her to be unusually well-informed for a non-incumbent. So I do make it a point. I've been going to city council meetings for more than five years, and sitting in the back and listening. The reason I can do that, I can afford to do that, is I work on the computer, and they have great air conditioning and free Wi-Fi at City Hall. <laughs> so I just sit back there and work and earn money, you know, I'm on the clock. But I'm listening to what people are saying, what council's saying. But the best thing is going at noon when you hear the public line up and you hear them say what's important to them and the direction that we need to go and what's going on in their neighborhood. And that's when you really get, Susie is there every Tuesday. So just a little bit about me is that I used to live in Mexico in a little town called Loreto, Baja California Sur. And that's just on the Sea of Cortez. I was working in tourism. And I lost my job in uh, September 11th, 2001, a day we all remember. And that was because the Mexican tourism, tourism economy completely crashed. And all Americans got fired right away. 
So I had to set my course. What am I going to do now? I was going to live here again. Yeah? So I found a place on the Texas coast that reminded me of that little sea village on the Sea of Cortez. And it was Corpus Christi, Texas. But it's really close to my family because I'm from Texas. My family lives just up the road in Austin, so it was a really good fit for me. And ever since I moved here, I've really dug in my roots. I'm, I met a man here, we got married, we have a kid, we bought a little cottage on North Beach, and we're just really happy. But we had to start fixing things because our neighborhood wasn't good. And so we worked on our house a little bit, but we started working with the neighbors. We got together, we made improvements to our neighborhood, and that took going to City Hall. And it took knocking on the door a bunch of times, lots of phone calls, lots of pictures sent, lots of videos sent of what's wrong with our city. And that's what I want to do. I want to do that in the rest of District 1. I want to find those neighbors that are frustrated. They feel like that they're not being listened to and help them and be the connection between them and City Hall because our basic services aren't even being met in many cases. And that's a place to start just the basic services. And uh, here's Susie. So I'll talk more if you ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. And you can see Carrie is passionate about her position. But we have no young men so happy you could join us. We want to make sure that everybody uh, gets an opportunity. And let me tell you, we contact El Canada. So John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm John Garcia. <clears throat> John Garcia, born and raised in Corpus Christi, uh, attended Gore Miller High School. I'm in the tourism industry. Um, for, for District 1, which is downtown, North Beach, the Calan area, all the way to Noises River, which right now, with the, the biggest impact that we're gonna have is basically with the Harbor Bridge. I mean, the Harbor Bridge, which hopefully by January or February, they'll have a contractor that, uh, um, that's gonna start working on the bridge, but that's gonna create a lot of economic development in that area from the North Beach area to downtown to um, the North, North Beach, uh, North Side, which is vacant right now because the refineries in that area, they're buying out that area so no one, you know, with any type of explosions in that area, don't put no lawsuits in that area. But uh, um, I'm here for the people, I'm here for senior citizens, our veterans, I'm there to be the voice in City Hall, and I'm not there for myself for a benefit, I'm just, I'm just there for the people. Any questions for any of these three candidates? Carlos. Well, uh, Carlos Torres, uh, and, uh, I'm a firefighter, but I'm going to speak as a, as a private citizen or a public citizen, I should say. And my question, first of all, thank you all for running. It takes a lot to run for an elected position in the city and the county, the state, and the nation. And we thank you for you know stepping up to the plate and running District 1. District 1 definitely needs a change. Um, we don't hear a lot about the candidates there right now. And I don't live in District 1, but here's, here's a District 1 question. Uh, last year, right around September, August, September, we uh, removed the fourth firefighter off of fire station number two, engine number two. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a ladder truck. We took the fourth firefighter. At that time, that truck was 66% effective with four firefighters. We removed, removed that firefighter so we could open up an additional two ambulances in the city. Now we needed the two ambulances. There's no question about that and the Firefighters Association and the firefighters supported that, that we needed the ambulances. But they decreased staffing in that part of District 1. So now you're running a fire truck with only three firefighters making that truck only 33% effective. How would you address this issue if and when you're elected to City Council? And I'm going to ask the candidates to kind of restrict their answers to about 30 seconds. How many seconds? Starting. <laughs> one thing that I can tell you about firefighters, they're, uh, they're one of my best heroes there ever will be. And when you take one person off of a fire truck and you go out on a fire with three, that hose is hard enough to control. If one man has heat, exhaustion, and goes down, that truck goes down. When that truck goes down, your house is on fire because they have to render aid to that person. 
So by the time another unit gets on the scene, only the Lord knows what could happen. With uh, with District One, with being downtown and the infrastructure, that's everything that's going on in that area. I would think we'd probably have to look in the survey within the fire stations that do cover District One and be there behind you 100% to get those that manpower that will be able to accommodate everybody in our district. It's a matter of priorities, of economic priorities, and they chose to put their money elsewhere. Now, right now, they want to spend $13 million to lay a water pipe out to the Chapman Ranch, yet we don't have enough firefighters on our fire trucks. So I think we're moving in the wrong direction with our current council members, especially the one I'm running against. But um, so I would just say that change the priorities, put it on fire, put it on police, put it on our first responders. Those are people and those are who protect us. Thank you. Any other questions for District 1? If not, thank you, District 1. We appreciate it. Now, uh, thanks for going to be taking on District 2. And I know if you need to get up and go have coffee, our restrooms are over here in the back.